Okay, let's make this work. Point it this way. Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. Ah, that's better. Okay. Hopefully you can't hear the refrigerator back here. I can't turn it off, so I'll have to look at that. I'm going to answer some questions I got here. This is from T Cook 96 Great video as usual. Did you ever consider flying for the airlines? I did. Back in the early 90s, I flew for a commuter. I flew for TW Express. And that was the Embraer 120. I was in FO for a couple of years. Made $14,000 a year, and I had a family of four at that time. So that just wasn't working out. And they got another job, paid much better. At that point, it was very difficult to go back and start over. And then everybody jumps in here and said, about my age, I'm 58. So at this point with the airlines, uh, I would probably never transition into the left seat and I would take a big pay cut going backwards. So I would not go into the airlines unless um, something drastically changed. I would like to fly as long as I can. Airlines, right now, at 65, you're done. That's it. Doing this type of work, I can get, as long as I can hold a medical and I'm competent to fly, I can continue. Gosh, years ago when I worked in Arkansas, I worked for a charter company. They had some King Air, some Barons, and one of the captains I flew with was actually 80 years old. I mean, he did a great job. You know, eventually he did have to retire. But I would like to continue flying. I enjoy it. It's fun. Here's a comment I see a lot. This guy, he says, and this is when I took a video of another airplane lady, he said, he came in low. And yeah, he probably did. But one thing that you guys don't see is a lot of this stuff I do with a, my phone. I've got a Samsung Galaxy S6. Takes great video. But the perspective that you see on the video is not exactly what you would see with the visual eye. And the GoPro, I use the GoPro for the landings. It will look like you're lower than you really are uh, coming in to land. It's just a, I guess it's a lens thing. This is from initials, CKN, uh, some constructive criticism. He's absolutely right. Uh, I have one comment that has bugged me about your vlogs. You appear to hold your camera a bit too close to your face. I probably do, and that's probably because I walk around with my camera in my arm pretty much like this. And the reason I do this is because a lot of stuff that I take video of, there is no time to set anything up. And that's why at times it's going to look jerky, it's going to look a little off, this or that. I'm just trying to capture a moment, a feeling of what it's like. And I have to hold it in my arm like this. And uh, I don't know, unless I get some type of surgery and extend my arm out a little, that's probably not going to happen. But you're right. I mean, I would agree with that also. It's just a byproduct of trying to do something very fast. Marin Delgado, you're right. We pilots love our toys. Yep. Uh, here's from Michael Mitisek. Mitisek, I think that's how you pronounce it. Oh, my apologies if I didn't. Uh, he asked about sitting in the back of an airliner because we pre reposition a lot. If it bothers me, it doesn't really bother me because these people are professionals. I mean, they are well trained in the aircraft. They're good at what they do. If anything, it's a little bit of a control issue. You know, if you've been sitting in the front, you like being in control. You like being in charge, being the guy that handles everything and does it. You know, you just have to give it up. So I what I do hate is sitting in the center seat in the row. It drives me crazy. Brian McGee, when you fly commercial, are you trying to guess what departure or arrival the pilots are using? You know, I don't really think about it, but I will tell you this. If you look on FlightAware, you can look up your airline flight, and it will actually show you what the flight plan routing is that they can expect. And it will tell you uh, the departure they're going to fly and the arrival. Okay, this is from WWERAW1123. He asks, what do we do at cruise once we level off? We'll do a cruise checklist, which is very short. It's basically just making sure everything is set. And then we monitor the radios. Every now and then we get a call. Uh, we get a call to look for traffic or something like that. Uh, but like when we flew out here to Tucson, it was a three hour and 17 minute flight. It's a long time at cruise. Passengers brought sandwiches. We had a sandwich. Actually, it's very good. It was an Italian sandwich. It was great. Thank you if you ever watch this. Talk about all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I mean, you'd be surprised what pilots talk about. Uh, just everything. Then we talk about what we're going to have lunch, what we're going to have for dinner, if we can do anything, this or that. You know, it's like everybody else does. Oh, this is from Gary C. I hear this a lot. Uh, he says a lot of stuff here, but one of the things he says, I do wish you could find a different mount for the camera, though. Looking at that pillar when I'm trying to see where you're going is just annoying. Gary, good point. 
it annoys me too. It's very frustrating. But with the Encore, you had huge windshields. Just about any place you put that camera and you pointed it, you were golden. It was good. With the Excel, the windows are much smaller. Not only that, there are a limited number of places I can actually put the camera. If I put it behind my head, it looks in my head. Uh, we've got the door here. There's nothing there. Up above it, there's nothing to attach the camera to my little GoPro. I can't use a suction cup. Really nothing because it's uh, because of the type of material on the overhead panel. To my left, which is really the only option, is the windshield. Where, and I use a little suction cup and put it up there. The problem is I can't come too far out because it'll hit my head or obstruct my vision. It's got to be fairly close to the windshield. I've kind of come up with something that I think is starting to work. So I'm going to be working through these videos that I've already made. But eventually you're going to see some improvements in that. It's probably not going to be what you really want but it's, we're limited by the constraints of being in an actual working aircraft. Sam Hope says, congrats on 10,000 subscribers. Thanks, Sam. I appreciate that, for actually noticing that. This is from Adam Loya. Do the surround trees make for an interesting crosswinds? And he's talking about private runway just south of Miami, where the trees and everything is right up on the runway. Adam, you're right. Uh, if you get a strong crosswind, it does start disturbing the airflow over there, and you get some eddies and stuff. But up to this point, it hasn't really been a problem for us. I will say this, because it makes me think of this. I used to fly into Telluride. Telluride was a very challenging airport to land at, because it's almost at a 10,000 foot elevation. The ends of the runway were 50 feet higher than the center. So it came, it bowed down to the center, and it was on a mesa with the edge of the mesa off to the side. So what would happen is you level off in the flare, and as you're slowing and leveling, the runway's actually moving away from you. Then if you don't have the aircraft on the ground by the time you reach, get to the center point, now the runway is rising into the airplane. Uh, so you had to be cognizant of that when you're landing there. The other thing you had to be really aware of, and this had a tendency to be dangerous, was the fact that that crosswind, when it hit the side of that mesa, once the wind picked up, it would rise and then fall and descend right over the center of the runway. If you were landing and you started getting that, I, I, more than once I saw aircraft going around because it, it was such a problem. Okay, this is from Jose Luis. Jose Luis, or Luis, I'm not sure, but he lives in Spain, and he's asking about the, the jets that I fly. He says almost all of them are Cessnas, and uh, would I like to fly other planes? Right now, I'm mostly flying Cessnas. I'm typed in most of the Cessnas, everything except for, I think, the tin and the Sovereign. So I have a lot of versatility there, a lot of experience. It just happens to be that people that I work for now have Cessnas, but I've flown Gulf Streams, Falcons, those would probably be the three big categories. I don't think I'm leaving anything out. And then in the future, that may change. I may end up flying something else. But right now, it's Cessnas. I like the Cessnas. There's a lot of commonality between the types of aircraft that carries over, uh, which makes it really easy to go from one type to another. Steve Hobbs. PFD was clear. No flicker effect from the camera. Uh, he's talking about the Excel. I get this question all of the time. Uh, and it's when people look at the videos from the Citation on Core cockpit videos that show the pilot flight displays, and there's this rapid flickering that they do. That happens because those PFDs, the electronic flight displays, displays are actually tubes. They're the cathode ray tubes, the older style tubes like you would have in the old tube TV sets. And they have a refresh rate. I think it's maybe 60 hertz or something like that. But what happens is within a second, it'll put up 60 images. Now your eye doesn't see that. It looks like a solid image. But as soon as you put the camera up, if it's not synced, exactly right with that display the camera catches the change and you see that as that flicker the gopro self-focuses so it makes adjustments with the uh, i guess the aperture and stuff like that what you will notice if you really pay attention is when we come into an airport and we start to maneuver and we start making turns uh, and this tends to happen i think when the sun is out at some points you will get flicker 
And then at other points, as the GoPro starts to adjust to the changing lighting, then you'll see the flicker go away in a solid. But the, the problem initially, I mean, basically has to do with the refresh rate of the monitor and the GoPro not being able to sync to it. In the Excel, those are different types of displays there, and that's why you don't see the flicker. It's not a CRT tube in the uh, Excel, so that, that's not a problem. And people will see those differences and think maybe I fixed something or done something. No, it's just the different types of displays. Ben Callison, is that your own airplane? Uh, no, Ben, it's not. I can't afford an airplane. Airplanes are very expensive, especially the jets. He's talking about the 182, but especially the jets. I've always said that the initial purchase is price is just that. It's the entry fee to continue paying because uh, they're very expensive to operate. Maintenance is very expensive. All right. Well, we leave the hotel at 11:30. We're going to stop at Subway, get a Subway sandwich. One o'clock takeoff back to St. Louis. Should get there after the air show. Whether it should be good, should all work out. Got twenty nine eighty nine traffic.